Hey guys, what's going on? It is the day after Thursday and the day before Saturday and somebody's about to get their form checked. Welcome back to Calgary Barbell for another episode of Form Check Friday. First up, we have Harry Smith. Now, Harry sent in some deadlifts here. Um, he says he's been trying to fix a similar issue for a while. Um, this first set here is some lighter weight stuff. He said he's been pretty much able to get himself out of a round back position into a flat back position. But when the weight gets a little bit heavier, he reverts to a more round back position. Now, um, there's a really, really good video that Mike Tashir, or a talk maybe, that uh, Mike Tashir did about how to transition from a round back deadlift to a flat back deadlift. Uh, and something that's really stuck with me that I've used with a lot of my athletes and would encourage you guys uh, to think about your deadlift sort of using this, uh, whatever, this idea. But I would say, think about them as two totally different movements. You're gonna have to reestablish your max uh, and you're gonna have to treat it as a new movement. Now, if you are aiming to transition to a flat back deadlift, and your back rounds, I would count that as a missed lift. So if whether you're using an RPE system, whether you're using a percentage-based system, 100% or your one rep max is the most weight you can lift with a flat back. If it rounds, it's not the same movement. So it's gonna take some time <clears throat> for you to be able to make that transition and to get strong with a flat back. But if you believe it's worth it and it's something that you wanna do, it's something that I'm a big advocate of, obviously, uh, that's gonna be the key. So. I would say more so than I can offer you any uh, specific technical correction, because as you can see, you're able to get into position, you're able to, to perform the movement properly with lighter weights, you're just gonna need to get stronger with a flat back position. Our next video or two comes from a gentleman named Cole. Now you can see Cole here squatting in knee wraps. As he said, he says this is one of his first times in knee wraps, I believe, uh, first time ever. And trying to hit depth, he's had a problem squatting too deep uh, without the wraps. So you can see here, looks like we're maybe a little bit on the line with depth. So the first thing, first thing I would try to do is squat actually a little bit deeper. Uh, it could just be the angle of the video, but it looks like we're not quite hitting depth. Another thing that I noticed was uh, I want you to try to play with your bar position. It looks like the bar is kind of rolling uh, and pushing you forward a little bit right as you hit the very bottom position of your squat. So I would say if we could work that bar down your back ever so slightly just so it's like uh, right on top of your rear delts instead of a little bit higher kind of on your traps. Let's work that bar position down a little bit more. You might be better able to kind of anchor it into your back and not get pulled forward out of the bottom uh, position of your squat. Now next up, Cole sent in a video of some deadlifts. Now Cole said he had a tough time with conventional because his back would round too much, so he switched over to sumo. Now, assuming that this is better than his conventional, I still think there's a lot of work that needs to be done here, man. Um, there's kind of almost an, a complete lack of setup here. Um, so, a couple things, just to sort of run through the gamut. We need to pull the slack out of the bar better. Uh, we need to make sure that you are in a fairly upright position. Um, and what I mean by that is pull your shoulder blades down your back to try and achieve a little bit more of a neutral spine position. You can see here as you initiate the lift, not only are we kind of jerking into the bar, but we're also not set in an ideal position to begin with. So those are the two biggest things that I would work on for you is one, trying to slow down your setup, be a little bit more patient, pull the slack out of the bar. Um, Make sure that you're, you're tight against the bar as you pull your hips down and pull your chest open, shoulders down, etc. to make sure that there's some tension on the bar. bar. And uh, when you start pulling, it's not just gonna pull you out of position because you're not set in your position. So those are the biggest things for you, Cole. Hopefully those help, buddy. Next up, we have a series of videos from Eosaba. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name even close to correctly. Uh, if not, I, I apologize. So a couple things here with your bench press. Number one, it looks like your grip is very narrow, judging by how far below the uh, line of your back and, and even below the bench your elbows are getting by the time you touch your chest. I think if you widen that up, you're gonna have a little bit less shoulder extension as you're going down. 
uh, and it's going to be a little bit more favorable in terms of maintaining a good position with the shoulder. The next thing I would do is work on trying to get your elbows to track directly under the bar. You can see in the video they're tucked too much, so they're out in front of the bar, uh, and that can play, that can cause some weird interactions, some weird tendonitis type issues to flare up on the elbow as you get heavier, uh, as you do more reps and more volume. So that's another thing I'd work on. The last thing I'm gonna say about your bench press is I want you to try to pull your shoulders back into a bit of a better position because right now when you get to the bottom of your bench press, it's partly because of the narrow grip and how much your elbow has to track, but your shoulder's rolling forward by the time you get to the chest. We wanna keep that shoulder back and open um, throughout the entire range of motion so we're not getting that dump forward in the bottom. Now your next video, you sent in some squats, buddy. Um, couple things here, number one, we're just kinda generally loose. I want you to try to focus on taking your breath, clamping your ribs down, pulling on the bar with your lats, and just kind of tightening everything up a little bit more before you initiate the squat. Uh, we're also kind of speeding into the bottom position. It looks like we could try to get a little bit tighter and a little bit more controlled in the descent. Another thing, we're over tucking the elbows. So it's, this is a great angle for it because you can see from the side, right when you initiate your squat, your elbows are almost in front of the bar. Um, now this amount of rotation in the shoulder can make it feel like your shoulder's tight, but generally is gonna lead to a lot more looseness. What we want is we want that elbow, it's gonna be probably slightly behind you to start off with, uh, and as your torso tilts and you descend into the squat, the elbow's probably gonna be right in line with your torso. But as it is right now, the elbow's tucked too far forward, it's out in front, uh, and we're over-rotating that shoulder joint, which is gonna cause some issues. And the last thing is, you can see here, we're a little bit overextended. So we're over-arching the low back just a little bit as you initiate and as you descend in your squat. And lastly, man, with your deadlifts here, we're seeing a bit of that same pattern. We're a little bit overextended in the low back. Uh, and also, I want you to kind of shift back a little bit. Your knees are probably gonna travel slightly forward, but I want you to shift the weight back on your heels so you can get that torso a tiny bit further behind the bar so your shoulders are a little more straight up and down. Right now, uh, as it stands, again, good side angle, I like that. Um, but we can see the shoulders are kind of out in front of the bar, causing you to have to do a little bit more work with that low back than you otherwise would if you could get that torso a little bit more upright. Hopefully that helps, buddy. So our next video for today's episode comes from Haley. Now Haley submitted a video and said that she has an issue with her knees caving in her squat. Now she said this issue gets a lot better with a narrower stance, but she's concerned she's not gonna get the same amount of uh, glute and hamstring posterior chain work uh, <clears throat> if she narrows her stance. Now there might be something to that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. The science seems to go back and forth a lot about whether there's such thing as a quad dominant or posterior dominant squat. But one thing I would say is that if you're able to avoid the knee crash by moving your stance narrower, I would advise you do that for your competition movement. Now. It's gonna depend on the reason you're squatting. If the reason you're squatting is to move as much weight as possible uh, and you're trying to increase the amount of weight you can squat, we're gonna best do that by performing the movement as efficiently and as safely as we can. If we can avoid the knee cave by going a little bit narrower, then we're gonna be able to do more volume. We're gonna be able to stay further from injury potential and we're likely gonna get stronger by moving a little bit more efficiently that way. If the goal of your squat is to try and target certain muscle groups by the way that you squat, then by all means use a wider squat. If that feels better, if you feel like you get a little bit more work for the posterior that way. But I would say if your goal here is to develop a competition squat and move as much weight as possible, I would go with the narrower one. You're gonna get good amount of work for the posterior, anterior, Everything, uh, a squat is a squat. If you can move more weight, you're probably gonna get better hypertrophy overall. So that's my two cents on that. Hopefully that helps to make up your mind on how you should move forward in that situation. All right, now our last submission today comes from a gentleman named Gino. That's a great, strong powerlifting name. If you don't know the famous Gino of powerlifting, this man, you should. 
Anyways, Gino's deadlift here. He complains that he's getting a little bit of back pain. Now, if you watch just as Gino sets up before he initiates the rep, he goes into a little bit of overextension with the back. Now that likely is putting a lot of stress on those lumbar extensors on the back and probably causing you to do a little bit too much work uh, or, or causing you to be in a little bit of a less than ideal position for those different muscle groups to do their job. So what I would try to get you to do is instead of going into that excessive sort of anterior pelvic tilt, I would get you to try to keep a little bit more neutral and focus on driving out of the bottom using your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, and trying to keep the, the core a little bit more uh, tucked in if you want to think about it that way. But try not to get into too much of an overextended pattern here. I know I preach a lot about back extension, but in your case, you're getting a little bit too much. Let's try to neutralize that out a little bit, and I'd be very surprised if your back doesn't feel a lot better. That's it for this episode, guys. We just finished June 27th here, uh, and we're ripping through these. We're doing lots of them. We're gonna be uh, hopefully getting one of these out every week for the foreseeable future. Thank you very much for your submissions. If you guys have any questions about anything that I've said throughout this video uh, or any of the videos, if you have your own critique, that's happened a couple times and people have had valuable things to say, let's discuss, leave that in the comments below. Like if you liked, share if you found it helpful, and we'll see you guys next Friday.